team, which was able to win the Dallas Regional Championships a lot, just with the Rotom Heat over the uh, Charizard. So, you know, one of the main things about this matchup, I have to wonder, is both means of speed control. Both players are opting for, you know, kind of faster variants uh, of their teams. And so Giovanni does have the Tailwind potential, whereas uh, Gabriel does not. So. Uh, for Gabriel, his strategy might be to go for like a fake out with Meowstic and try to knock out the Wimscott turn one. And Arcanine, of course, is a good Pokemon to do that, able to hit with the super effective fire type attack. Yeah, and talk about a familiar sight on Giovanni's side of the field. Wimsicott and Duraludon will be his lead. Yeah, so we've seen this <laughs> quite a lot. No surprise to see it once again, but here is one of the advantages of Meowstic as a prankster user, does get access to that fake out. Now, the big question here is, does Whimsicott carry Protect? A bunch of Whimsicotts more recently, especially on these fast Tailwind teams, have been running Protect specifically to counter the Fake Outlet is now getting more common. If you don't have Protect, though, you're probably just going to get knocked out immediately. Arcanine typically faster than Duraludon as well. And uh, sometimes Arcanine's even, you know, tech that Heat Wave specifically to bypass potential Follow Me's. So uh, if Whimsicott has Protect here, it's probably going to want to go for it. If not, then... I uh, might just get doubled up into with uh, Meowstic and Arcanine. That will just pick up a knockout immediately. And I think uh, for Gabriel's end, he's really going to want to deny a potential Tailwind. So uh, no Protect here, but a switch out will at least keep Whimsicott you know, around for a little bit longer. Yeah, and a good indication that Whimsicott on Giovanni's side of the field might be holding something like a Focus Sash or might not be running Protect. Mm -hmm. You know, deciding, I don't want to risk losing my item or potentially getting knocked out early on in this game to something like a Fake Out. So making that switch, especially into a Pokemon like Rotom Heat, who's going to resist any Fire-type attacks from that Arcanine, is going to be really important. And opening up the field for that Duraludon to go for the Dynamax and maybe get some big damage right at the start. Fake Out will connect with that Rotom Heat and a Snarl from that Arcanine connects with both Pokemon, dropping the special attack of that Duraludon and that Rotom by one stage as Duraludon goes for a Max Wormland, going to target down that Arcanine and again, just a nice chunk of damage, you know, going to lower the attack of that Arcanine, which could be important. You know, a lot of Arcanine will run Snarl even though they also run physical attacking moves just because it's such a great support move to have access to. Yeah, I think that's a great play from both ends. Uh, yeah, we're actually decides not to go for the fire type attack, going for a Snarl instead, catches the Rotom Heat switching in as well. But you can see how hard Duraludon just hits one Steinamax. I think what Gabriel's going for now is you'll notice that he went with the relatively passive lead with Meowstic and Arcanine. So the goal is basically to stall out this Duraludon Dynamax and then you know make use of your Dynamax in the back, whether it be something like Duraludon or Togekiss. Well, Duraludon is going to do a bit of stalling itself with a Max Guard, going to block the Thunder Wave from the Meowstic from connecting with it, which is huge in terms of speed control on the field. Snarl will not be connecting with that Duraludon as well, but will connect with that Rotom. And again, just slowly weaken the special attack of that Rotom and sort of limit how much this Thunderbolt can do to the Meowstic. It looks like it's going to be a four-hit knockout, but it does get the paralysis, which is key when you consider that the Whimsicott is still in the back of Giovanni's party, relatively unscathed. Yeah, you know, by going for the Max Guard on Giovanni's end, though, he only has one turn of Dynamax. Now, Gabriel's not going to win with Arcanine and Meowstic. That's no, a really no. passive combination. <laughs> but, you know, like we were talking about, I think he's really just setting himself up for a potential late-game sweep. The thing is... You know, Giovanni's got some really strong Pokemon even once uh, out of Dynamax form. You know, Wimsicott especially can set up a Tailwind. So, uh, Gabriel revealing the Thunder Wave there, really key means of speed control. Uh, you know, the Max Guard there prevents it from paralyzing Duraludon. But uh, right now, Gabriel's still not able to really pressure very much with damage. Uh, and, oh, Thunder Wave actually oh, misses. Unfortunately oh. for that Meowstic, we get another miss as well from the Snarl. That Duraludon just somehow dodging all of these attacks, even though it's this giant presence on the field. Gonna go for a Max Wormwind to pick up the KO onto that Arcanine. And what a huge miss there from that Thunder Wave. Unfortunately, that Meowstic will have another opportunity to go for it again. You can't see this Rotom finding a way to knock it out. Oh. But also, you know, <laughs> using this opening to go for a supportive move. You know, this is the second Nasty Plot Rotom we've seen in this tournament, and it's such a good Pokemon to have it on. Yeah, it's genuinely one of my favorite Pokemon. I think it's actually really critical in this matchup as well, especially because it, I think, just deters Gabriel from going, you know, with Togekiss and trying to sweep through uh, a lot more. And so Nasty Plot there, you know, able to counteract the Snarls there, obviously, uh, Duraludon being able to avoid a bunch of attacks there gives Giovanni a larger advantage than he probably would have had otherwise. So Dynamax is going to end now, but the thing is Meowstic he still isn't doing very much. You can't even Thunder Wave the Rotom because it's Electric type, so you're pretty much clicking Thunder Wave onto the uh, Duraludon. And Conkelder coming out here is a really interesting choice, I think, because if you are, for example, uh, Guts, then you don't have to worry as much about a Will-O-Wisp from Rotom. 
And if yeah, you might even consider Dynamaxing it, for example, Assault Vest with Guts right now, it's a great candidate to Dynamax, get some max knuckles off and maybe just sweep with it. You have to wonder um, that the Conkelder is also on the field to sort of try and threaten down that Duraludon the best it can. Mm -hmm. uh, Conkelder also gets access to something like Drain Punch, which will maybe offset some of the big damage from this Rotom. But uh, Gabriel really needs to find a way to, you know, either force it off the field or knock it out. Because if it's allowed to sit there with that nasty plot boost and just deal Thunderbolts, that's going to be a lot of consistent damage for him. Yeah, definitely. I think right now this kind of highlights maybe one of the weaknesses of a Pokemon like Meowstic, where, yeah, it's Prankster, it's got some good utility, but right now it's just kind of sitting on the field and the most it can offer is like either a Thunder Wave into Duraludon, maybe like a Psychic or a Taunt here. So it's kind of like a 2v1. Oh, here's Thunder Wave. It does connect this time around. Also, importantly, no Dynamax from Conkelder, so it might be that double up, like you mentioned, with that Drain Punch. We'll have to see. The Duraludon finally does get paralyzed, though. So Meowstic is uh, at least accomplished one thing on oh. his list of things to do. Draco Meteor does not miss, will connect with that Meowstic, and will be able to knock it out. So just being able to remain on the field long enough to finally land that paralysis, I, this is almost probably a benefit to Gabriel to getting it knocked out at this point in time. Drain Punch from that Conkelder will connect with the Rotom and uh, put it within KO range from an additional attack. Except for the held item is revealed on that Rotom. It is going to be one of those citrus berries. So again, just really great information. But I think uh, Gabriel got the KO he wanted there with his own Meow Stick. Yeah, the uh, Duraludon still outspeeds the Conkelder after yeah, the really Thunder Wave, which is, yeah, uh, you know, pretty interesting point. No Dynamaxer either, so Conkelder could have Dynamax, gone for a Max Knuckle, maybe go for an attack boost. And uh, right now, you know, Rotom is actually in a position where could, I have to really ask, you know, who's faster here between Togekiss and the Rotom? I think, like, Gabriel's probably going to want to Dynamax this uh, Togekiss now, but the thing is, because Duraludon is still faster than Conkelder, you can't just guarantee a knockout. I'm not sure a Mach Punch will actually be able to pick up the knockout here, so I think... For Gabriel Zen, he could Dynamax both. Like, I, I think like Togekiss is probably the better option, especially because you could go for something like a Max Airstream to increase some speeds. Although right now in this position, you'll probably want to just go for a Max Starfall. Yeah. But the big question also is what kind of Togekiss set is this? Are you one of those more offensive sets where you can actually dish damage? If not, for example, if you're like the bulky Babiri set where you don't really have any attacks other than Dazzling Gleam, then I think Conkelder is the clear choice to Dynamax. So we'll have to see who uh, Gabriel ends up choosing to Dynamax here. Well, it looks like the Rotom will be the only Pokemon attacking on Giovanni's side of the field as Duraludon is switched out for that Whimsicott, and Gabriel will be going for the Dynamax this turn. Uh, the big question, like you said, is who is that Pokemon going to be? And in this case, he has chosen to Dynamax that Togekiss. So uh, if that Togekiss is indeed faster than that Rotom, something like a Max Airstream or a Max Starfall will be doing tons of damage. If it is slower, the health boost from that Dynamax may help it survive the plus two special attacks that the Rotom can throw out. But instead, going for a Protect, Togekiss targeting Max Starfall into Ooh. the Whimsicott slot, going to bring it down to the Focus Sash. Meaning, if Conkelder has targeted that slot correctly, that could be an easy knockout for Gabriel and, you know, really remove the utility of the Whimsicott from Giovanni's side of the field. In this case, though, Drain Punch will go into the Protecting Rotom. Yeah, that's a big opportunity for Giovanni there because he, you know, that's one turn of Dynamax now out of the way. He can set up a tail in the Whimsicott as well. This is actually going to be really close. I think... Uh, Gabriel put himself in a position where he's conserved this Dynamax super well. I think it's a very clear Tailwind and probably Thunderbolt into Togekiss here. And then you try to play the 2v2 after both of your Pokemon get knocked out. Well, Thunderbolt will connect with the Togekiss. It does not pick up a KO. Instead, Togekiss free to fire back a Max Airstream into that Whimsicott for a little bit of speed control of its own. I think the big question here is if that Conkelder does decide to target that Rotom Heat again with something like a Drain Punch, will it do enough damage to pick up that knockout or will it just, you know, leave that Rotom on the field with just enough health to weave in one more attack thanks to the Tailwind. Oh, oh actually, talk about leaving it on the field. Yeah, he's on with one HP. Giovanni might have actually preferred a double free switch in there. Um, you know, the upside of Rotom surviving for him is like you can just sacrifice it and uh, you know bring something else out right now. But I think a double switching might have been a little bit more optimal. We'll see what his last Pokemon is. I think if it's uh, Togekiss, it's definitely going to be a pretty big offensive threat, especially with Tailwind. So I think uh, Duraludon switching in here makes sense. You might want to just go for... Uh, you could even attack with both, but I, I think... Uh, for Giovanni here, he's probably going to want to protect one of the two Pokemon so that it's a 2v2 as opposed yeah. to a 2v1. Uh, because right now, you can just go for a Mach Punch onto the Rotom and a Max Starfall, which should just pick up the double knockout. And uh, Gabriel might be content to just 
you know, play it safe here. I think uh, Giovanni's never switching out. I wouldn't say never. We don't know what the last Pokemon is, but it'd be rare for him to switch out. And I think uh, his goal right now is to stall out this Dynamax, maybe bring out Togekiss, especially if you have the speed advantage, and then just try the end game with like uh, you know some dazzling gleams, especially if you're the offensive Togekiss that uh, is often seen on these teams. Yeah, you never want to uh, play in a way that gives your opponent an easy 2v1 lead. And yeah. I really like uh, the idea of maybe protecting this Duraludon or that Rotom. You know, we already saw um, the Rotom go for a protect earlier on in the game, so it's likely that it might go for it again here, but it looks like Giovanni instead is choosing to protect that Duraludon. Uh, Conkeldur going to connect that Mach Punch with that Rotom, so it will get knocked out. And in this case, because Togekiss is still Dynamax, this Max Starfall will be able to deal some damage through that Protect. Yeah, solid damage there, and enough maybe where Mach Punch will be able to pick up the knockout now, given that Duraldon does not look very bulky, so... Yeah. The big question is, what's Giovanni's last one? It's actually Kunkelder, it's not Togekiss. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, you think about Kunkelder versus a Togekiss, that's already going to be a huge advantage for Gabriel, but... Um, I don't know, maybe he has something that he can maybe double into that Togekiss and remove the threat. He still has Tailwind on his side. Yeah, he has Tailwind up. Uh, Kunkelder and Togekiss on the opposing side both have an increased stage of speed from that Max Airstream. I mean... Maybe Mach Punch plus Dazzling Gleam is just the safest play from Gabriel's end yeah. and from uh, Giovanni's end. I mean, the question is, can you knock out Togekiss fast enough? And then you still have to play the 1v1 against Kinkelder as well. I think uh, this game highlights how a defensive lead can actually work out. We were actually talking about that before the yeah, game as yeah. well, but uh, Gabriel recognizing just how good Togekiss is and it actually reveals Protect. All right, well, that Togekiss won't be taking any damage this turn. Conkelder targeting Mark Punch into that Duraludon for that knockout. So, like you said, that Max Starfall through Protect just doing enough. And Conkelder on Giovanni's side of the field revealing a Thunder Punch. So that is great information for Gabriel going into game two. Yeah, the Protect there, I think, is smart, too, because it covers the Duraludon potentially getting a double Protect, and then Thunder Punch maybe can get a critical hit or paralyze the opposing uh, Togekiss. So uh, not a move we see very often on Togekiss. A single target Dazzling Gleam there almost gets a KO with that critical hit. Yeah, and that's a good thing to keep in mind as well, because when you see Togekiss starting to get those critical hits, you have to wonder if it's going to be that super luck ability that it is holding. In this case, a Drain Punch will be enough to KO that Conkelder on Giovanni's side of the field, and Gabriel is up one game in this round four of Swiss. Yeah, really impressive for him to pull it back, and I think it's a great game awareness to not just try to go on the offense and lead your own Togekiss or Duraludon and just you know, trade the Dynamax potential. I think uh, Gabriel recognizes that in this set, he does not have Tailwind, whereas Giovanni does. And so uh, if you just go with an offensive lead, something like Duraludon, Togekiss, or, you know, like Meowstic Duraludon, like Giovanni's often going to be able to maintain the speed. And so Arcanine, despite being relatively passive, like uh, the, the key thing here is that Gabriel was able to stall out the Tailwind. Um, and the Dynamax, more importantly. I think, like, Giovanni's Duraldon, curiously enough, went for that Max Guard uh, on the second turn, so wasn't able to just get, like, another big attack off here. And also, for Giovanni's end, I think if he had Togekiss in the back instead of Conkelder, that might have given him a better shot in the late game. But you can see how, despite these teams having multiple, uh, you know, Pokemon that are the same, uh, played out, plays out very differently because of the fact that Giovanni has tail. And I think now that he knows, okay, Meow State came out as a lead, uh, he led something specifically to counter me trying to set up tail in, perhaps on Giovanni's end, given that we didn't see Wimscott go for protect, you lead something that just can play better around Arcanine and Meow State. Don't go for a turn one tail in, maybe keep Wimscott in the back for a late game tail in instead. Yeah, and I really liked how the Arcanine was almost able to uh, punish uh, Giovanni in addition to stalling out the Dynamax mm -hmm. turns with that Snarl. Yeah. You know, I didn't think of it in the moment, but that Rotom Heat really had to go for the Nasty Plot given the fact that it had those Snarls sort of stack up on it while uh, Gabriel was sort of counting down those turns. So being able to force your opponent to, um, you know, sort of have to go for one of those uh, supportive moves in order to get any damage output at all at that point in time is going to be really important as well, just when you look at the overall flow of the game. And I, I really like how Arcanine can do that. You know, it has access to all of those amazing moves that allow it to sort of say, yes, you know, I know that you're going to be playing it slow because I, I am on the field and I want to play things slow, but I can also, you know, sort of set things up so that later on it's a lot easier for the Pokemon in the back to be successful as well. Yeah, I'd love to see Rotom Heat come out as a lead for Giovanni here. I think especially with Nasty Plot, that's one yeah. of the best ways to counter Snarl Arcanine, where even if Arcanine gets a Snarl off, you can Nasty Plot. Uh, multiple times and Arcanine doesn't really do any damage. So I think we are about to get into this next game. Um, looks like we're just setting up here. Uh, but yeah, I think Rotom Heat plus something like Togekiss could be a really interesting option because then you could maybe consider even Dynamaxing Togekiss, get Max Airstreams off. I think uh, Thunder Wave on Meowstic is a really big 
attack though because it yeah. means that Giovanni can't just run away with speed for example like if he chooses to dynamax the Togekiss but yeah I think you probably don't lead Whimsicott here if you're on Giovanni's and of course Gabriel can predict that and say okay well, he's not going to bring the Whimsicott maybe I'll lead a little bit more offensively this time uh, we still don't know how like you know the Duraludons and the Togekiss match up in terms of against each other in terms of speed so that's going to be I think a pretty big dynamic as well yeah you have to wonder though is there any benefit to bringing Whimsicott in the back of the party given mm. that it's sort of meant to set things up initially for all these trainers? Yeah, I think there's certainly value. Like a late game Whimsicott can allow the Duraludon to sweep through. I think like Duraludon's really good against Gabriel's entire team. If you look at it, it hits everything for, you know, neutral or super effective. Those you know, drops are uh, really, really important as well. Um, but it, the key thing, once again, is that it's not super strong against uh, Snarl, mm -hmm. uh, especially when, uh, you know, it's Arcanine doing it. So you perhaps want to keep Whimsicott in the back. You set up that Tailwind in the late game to allow it to Duraludon to outspeed everything on Giovanni's end. So uh, even normal Duraludon, I think, can put in a lot of work here, especially if it's uh, supported by fake tiers. But I think I'd maybe like to see um, Giovanni prioritize, like, Rotom and Tobikus a little bit more in this matchup. Yeah, it's super interesting to me as we go into game uh, team preview for game two here that even though these trainers are running you know very visually similar teams these pokemon are being played in such different uh styles and strategies mm -hmm. that it's really important to sort of look at those differences to figure out how exactly they're going to match up yeah and i think the other really uh interesting point from that last game was the uh protect on Togekiss. Like, yeah uh, definitely not an attack we see very often but sometimes opted for, especially on like more offensive token kisses where uh, you know people are often expecting something like follow me and often like will double up into token kiss because they think it's safe. So uh, I think, you know, uh, Gabriel re revealing it there because he felt like uh, he hadn't won the game completely. I want to cover all his options, but that is a really big piece of information. And yeah, there's the lead. All right. Well, it looks like Gabriel is going with the same lead as game one with that Whimsicott and Arcanine, but Giovanni switching it up with the token kiss and the Rotom Heat. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to see out of Giovanni. I think uh, this lead gives you a lot more pressure. You can choose to even not Dynamax because, I mean, Arcanine here doesn't do much damage. At most it can Flare Blitz. Uh, Rotom here is content to Nasty Plot maybe even multiple times because I, I think it's a great candidate to Dynamax. If you look at, uh, you know, Gabriel's team, what really hits it for big damage? Well, it's probably like uh, Max Wormwind from Duraludon or Max Starfall from Togekiss. But after you get a Nasty Plot off, uh, Rotom probably is able to get the one-hit KO on either of those two, even in Dynamax form. So, uh, yeah, I think this is an excellent adjustment here by Giovanni and Gabriel decides to still play it safe with his, you know, uh, game one lead. And you know, the upside for him is he can click Snarl multiple times. It's just that Meowstic at most can go for a Thunder Wave. Uh, clicking Fake Out here is even kind of risky because Giovanni could choose the Dynamax, but you might Fake Out Rotom here to, yeah, prevent the Nasty Plot. Yeah, so no Dynamax this turn. Fake Out and Snarl out from Gabriel's side of the field going to drop the special attack of that Rotom by one stage and potentially set it up so that it has to go for a nasty plot in turn two. Togekiss, happy to go for some damage with that Dazzling Gleam. Going to do a nice amount to that Meowstic as well with a critical hit. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, the critical hit, probably the scope lens that we often see. And I think, like, this duel in particular is really good e because even with Snarl Arcanine, like, Nasty Plot kind of reverts the Snarl and Togekiss is, you know, getting a critical hit half the time anyway. So uh, I think uh, probably the best play from both players in there, I like Giovanni's decision to not Dynamax there as well, you know, wanting to conserve it because he realizes, like, Gabriel's not going to Dynamax here earlier on. Yeah, and the fact that uh, Meowstic can only go for Fake Out on the first turn is also important when avoiding something like the Dynamax. Uh, Meowstic can tend to go for some damage here with a Psychic and another Snarl following up from its buddy Arcanine. So really the big question here is what are the Togekiss and the Rotom going to do on Giovanni's side of the field? And will it be enough to potentially remove this Meowstic from play before it's able to Thunder Wave any of the Pokemon present? Thunderbolt plus a Dazzling Gleam from that Togekiss will secure the KO and also bring Arcanine down to about maybe uh, three quarters of its health. So just slowly starting to stack up some damage and um, really sort of adjusting to the slow play we saw from Gabriel back in game one. Yeah, Giovanni also opting for the decision to not go for a Nasty Plot, which I think is actually smart in this position. Basically, he's saying, okay, I want to get Meowstic out of the way. Once Meowstic's out of the way, then you can't Thunder Wave me. And if there is Whimscott and Duraludon on the back, then you can just tail and maybe sweep through with Duraludon on Dynamax in the late game, especially because you know that... Um, it's not, like, the Togekiss on the opposing end is more offensive. So uh, I like the mix-up from both players. I think, well, Gabriel's been playing this as well as possible, given the lead matchup. And uh, now it's a 4-3 advantage for Giovanni, of course. Uh, both Pokemon, uh, 
not really able to do very much right now. This actually might be a prime position for Togekiss on Gabriel's end to just Dynamax and start getting some big damage off. I think Arcanine here content to continue clicking Snarl. Yeah, and fortunately for uh, Gabriel as well, he's gotten those two Snarls down onto the Rotom on the opposing side of the field, which means any nasty plot from here on will just be, you know, raising Rotom's attack up to what it would be without the presence of those Snarls. So Togekiss in a pretty safe position to go for something like a Dynamax here. You know, go for that big damage with something like the Max Starfall onto that Rotom and try and remove it from the field before um, it's able to recover from all those Snarls and start dealing big damage to the Pokemon on Gabriel's side of the field. No Dynamax Ooh. yet from Giovanni either, and Arcanine revealing that it's brought Helping Hand. So Helping Hand plus an attack from this Togekiss could really threaten this Rotom Heat, who's only doing a little bit of damage. <laughs> Important to note that the Togekiss on Gabriel's side of the field is going to be slower than both the Togekiss and the Rotom Heat on Giovanni's side of the field, as that Max Airstream is able to connect with the Togekiss and pick up a KO. Yeah, picks up that knockout there. Uh, With a critical hit as well. <laughs> yeah, you can see just how good Scopeland's Togekiss is here. You had three <laughs> critical hits uh, in this turn, and I think Togekiss, you know, the correct target. At this point, you've whittled away enough at Rotom, where it's also at minus two special attack, hasn't gotten a nasty plot off, so Thunderbolt, as you saw, really does little damage. And there's the Whimsicott, so yeah, I mean, I think what Giovanni's trying to set himself up for is maybe like a Tailwind and then just sweep with Duraludon, but he's kind of in an awkward spot right now where yeah, Rotom is not really doing very much damage to either Pokemon. Uh, we haven't seen the Arcanine's item, I believe, yet either. So if it is carrying like one of those bulkier berries, a Thunderbolt will just activate that berry. But I think you have to go for Tailwind here. Otherwise, you're just going to get outsped and get KO'd. Yeah, but if Gabriel is given the opportunity to go for three max airstreams, you know, that might be enough to just offset that Tailwind entirely, mm -hmm. depending on what Pokemon are on his side of the field as the Duraludon takes it, uh, you know, takes the field itself. Rotom finally going for a nasty plot, but Arcanine is there with a Snarl to lower its special attack down to minus one overall immediately afterwards. And Togekiss going for that max airstream to target down the Whimsicott. It already took a little bit of chip damage from that Snarl, so it's easy to KO. Yeah, so this gives Giovanni a free switch in, and if it is that Duraludon in the back, you know, definitely a pretty great Pokemon to switch out into. Now, the thing is, if uh, Gabriel is running max speed Arcanine, because of the two Airstream boosts, it basically negates the uh, Tailwind, and you can basically Snarl. It is the Duraludon, which I think is the correct Pokemon to have in the back here. So this is going to be close. I think, like, the fact that here is, like, Arcanine can still click Snarl, and um, a Togekiss, especially if he gets a critical hit on Slowrotom, will just pick up a knockout. Uh, you know, one thing you could do here is potentially maybe try to go for a Max Guard Protect. Um, you could also just choose to attack here with Duraludon uh, and maybe try to pick up the knockout on Arcanine. But the thing is, a Dynamax Duraludon still has to worry about getting crit from the opposing Togekiss. And yeah. so I think, like, Togekiss is actually such a major offensive threat right now that you're going to want to check that. Yeah, but you do have to go for the Dynamax on the Duraludon because you're down to your final two Pokemon, and if you don't Dynamax now, you know, there's the uh, the option that you might not have a chance to Dynamax at all. So I do like how Giovanni goes for the Dynamax here on that Duraludon. It will have two turns where the Pokemon on Gabriel's side of the field won't have access to Dynamax, mm -hmm. and maybe that will be enough for Giovanni to try and find a way to win this game and tie up the score. That Arcanine will outspeed all the Pokemon on Giovanni's side of the field and connect a Snarl with both of them as Duraludon will move next with a max Steel Spike into oh, that Togekiss. Is unable to get the knockout, unfortunately, thanks to the special attack drop from that Arcanine. We'll boost the defense of those Pokemon by one stage each, though. It may come in handy later on. You never know. Oh, is it enough? Thunderbolt no, isn't it's enough not. to pick up the KO as well. So Togekiss free to go for its third max airstream into that oh. Roto, but also misses the KO. So there is a lot of, uh, you know, uh, knockout missing here this turn, but what an exciting game as Rotom just is going to hang around long enough to potentially get one more attack in. Yeah, Max Starfall there probably would have gotten the knockout, especially with that critical hit. Might have needed the crit to knock out uh, with Starfall, but Max Airstream, despite the crit, still doesn't KO. The main thing here is that now Arcanine and Togekiss are both faster than Duraludon and Rotom, yeah. so you've got the speed advantage. Um, this is going to be really close, I think. I mean, we don't even know what uh, Gabriel's last Pokemon is. If it's Conkeldur, I think he's in a phenomenal position to just close out this game. Um, and especially because Conkeldur matches up pretty well against the Duraludon. So I think, yeah, you might want to protect here with Rotom, but you get a knockout with Duraludon, and then like Dynamax is going to end. Gabriel gets a free switch in, and if it is the Conkeldur, I think that's probably just game. So Giovanni at this end, I, point is I think probably hoping that maybe it's the... Uh, 
maybe it's the opposing Duraldon or Jellison, but even then, I think these Snarls just are uh, putting in so much work right now. Yeah, Max Wormwind is actually going to connect with that Arcanine for the KO there, so a, a little bit of a change-up. I think I was expecting that Togekiss to be targeted, but mm -hmm. it will give us an opportunity to see what Gabriel's last Pokemon is. So let's see. It's going to be a Dazzling Gleam, and a you know, Crit Dazzling Gleam will still probably do like 50% of this Duraludon, so let's see if it gets a yeah, critical hit. Yeah, uh, I don't think that's a critical hit, unfortunately, for that Togekiss, but it does leave Duraludon at just below half of its health, which means a potential There's critical Kinkel hit, there. or maybe even just a good old Mach Punch and uh, Dazzling Gleam combination from these two Pokemon will be enough to clean up this game. Yeah, uh, I really like the decision here. You can see, despite not having Tailwind, uh, you know, Gabriel here basically kind of had, I wouldn't say an extra Pokemon, but Giovanni's Whimsical was solely used to set up Tailwind. Yeah. And Gabriel was able to counteract that by going for multiple max airstreams, which I think was uh, really clever. And, uh, you know, Meowstic was kind of his more support-oriented Pokemon, but I uh, feel like it, you know, punched a little bit above its weight class because of its ability to go for Fake Out. Here's Mach Punch to close out uh, Rotom. Yeah, and I do really like how this uh, Conkeldor does have access to Mach Punch because otherwise it would have not been able to outspeed any of the Pokemon on Giovanni's side of the field. A max Steel Spike will be enough to pick up the KO on Togekiss and, you know, maybe importantly boost the defense of that Duraludon by a stage. So, you know, there is an opening here for Giovanni to uh, try and win this game now that Tailwind has expired and these two trainers are down to their last Pokemon and Dynamax is done, but... Conkelder, thanks to Mach Punch, will still have the opportunity to attack first. Yeah, Mach Punch might not KO here. I think Duraludon's only chance is maybe going for a critical hit Draco Meteor onto the Conkelder, but I think Conkelder still should click Mach Punch because yeah. you have a chance of getting a critical hit, no reason to click Drain Punch, and so there's the Mach Punch. Yeah, it connects and it misses the KO, but uh, Duraludon, it's all going to come down to this Draco Meteor. It does connect, so that is, you know, the first step, I think, in trying to tie this game up. Oh. But unfortunately, it does not get a critical hit, and I think more importantly, uh, gives us some indication of how this Conkeldur is trained. You know, it looks to be on the bulkier side, so I don't even think a critical hit would have helped him there, unfortunately. Yeah, that was a really fun set. I thought, you know, uh, it's... It's so often, especially on the stream, we see a Dynamax turn one from an offensive Pokemon, but Gabriel played that very differently, yeah. showing this more passive combination of Meowstic and Arcanine. I think uh, Snar Arcanine is something that, you know, had seen some usage definitely, especially uh, in the last couple of weeks or so, but a really great demonstration by showing that like, you don't necessarily need to just like overwhelm with fire in the very, very beginning of the game, and you can kind of stall things out and then just sweep through with the Dynamax Pokemon. Also shows why Togekiss is just such a good Pokemon in Dynamax, especially by able, uh, being able to get the speed boost from Max Airstream. Yeah, and the fact that the